dip. Push up towards B. They're going to get tens off of the site right away. It's not only Sherris, but also a lot of ghosts now. Basically, it's going to become a brawl. Oh, he stays. Fundamentals and trades staying over. All of them are blinded! Tens with three kills in the round! Last one to go, finally denied by Tui's, but he's all alone. And second, again, the Twinsies come out to work. And the last thing Loud wanted to see is a pistol round like that on map three from Sentinels. Absolutely incredible. Outlaw coming in as well. Holy crap, if Tens felt like he was online in the other games, this one just got turned online as well. How does he find these timings? Remember the last time with an op in the spoke, getting some kills on split, Shorty coming through this time, getting a perfect timing for this flash to blind everybody down on Lounge side and get a three piece of his own. He's gonna be a force to be reckoned with right now on this map. He's loud, trying to change the pace. Aggressive now towards the yeah. east side, Saucy Falls. A quick pipe shot. You see both of the walls over towards B quickly going up. They're gonna hit towards A, so they try to draw attention and QCK is gonna pick another one up a second answers back. Yeah, but then we have that ADS from Kawadzine picking up the bulldog that was left behind Zekin Falls. So the outlaw will not be able to get picked up Fight yet planted. to allow these pawn shots Just to happen. Down. You definitely do see Lao here one shot of an energy here with the outlaw or also just spamming with these rifles. The submachine guns, the Spectre to get the kill. But after that first initial push coming yet? out from I John Cutie, Lao seems to be a, in a very good position to hold this pulse plant. Slow push in, back control the site. They just trade whatever they're defending right now. So Loud can fire all the way in. Okay, so that's a nice shot. John Judy pushing four to two versus one. It's up to Tui's alone they're once missing. again. And now Wall's gonna be an annoying to deal with. He gets the first kill. South is trying to stick it, but Tui's gets the pick. The Red Bull Clutch to tie up the game early on Icebox. And Loud comes alive much earlier in this game. It has to feel good for them to find ground right now. The first two maps went 4-0, 5-0 before Loud answered back. Not this time. We're gonna see him a little bit more hungry here as we get into round three after this replay. Loud feeling good after the second round by to win after losing Pistol. Still smiles, still vibing. Can never count Loud out. Cascade forward, still working this wall onto B, but now they have Harbor's wall to take Ooh. towards A as QCK, another first kill of the round. Time for Sentinels to push out quick, and that Cascade was annoying to deal with. At least they got the kill out of that for Sentinels with the low buy that they have, whole classics actually, just utility. Yeah. Really the plan was trying to get tens with an orb. A death allows for him to get the KO ult in the next round. For Loud, it's a reset. Using utility now to clear towards the A site. Dizzy thrown up, a swing through the Viper wall. Beautiful kill from Kawazin onto Zekin. And once again, nullifying the surprise attacks that Sentinels are trying to do. A little bit of pop shots and it's yeah. replied. Two E's gets the pick up to Zelsis. This is looking clean right now for Loud's conversion off the Thrifty that it just got on round number two. Clean, cut, clear. They take a site. They take down Sentinels for another round. Like you said, Sentinels buying classics, seeing that a lot more from teams, able to fill up the utility. And it actually feels good because if you do go down with your classic, you have utility coming into this round now. So just get to dip into the pocket a little yeah. bit. And you already have what you need to be throwing at your opponent. Utility and weapons for sure. Right, right. Operator's gonna be coming online here as we see Zekin spending a little bit more. Still quite a few away from the ultimate on orb, so this op hopefully coming into play for them. You see, once Loud figures it out, that might change their tune coming into this round. But they are gonna go for this pressure quickly on to Long D here. Take a dark miss, so it allows John Q to potentially get a surprise attack, but here. just saw that jiggle peek out. Mm -hmm. Loud falls back in instantly. One of those plays that Loud likes to do here is go aggressive, instantly stop, and try to re-hit right after. Get into timing out for the defensive side. Alan Drone gets denied, not too much information, but at least a Reckoning comes out to clear out the site. There's still players outside the perimeter, though, of this Reckoning on Sentinel side. KO ult that we talked about before. Tens has now activated it. Flash being thrown, Tens falls down, becomes a camera, allowing John Cutie to get these two picks. 
now off the pulse plant. There's a super late lurk right now from Les. Two snake bites available. Wall is still up. Cascade now being thrown for Nullifying forward. the off. Exactly. Nullifying that, but also allowing here tens to come back up. There is that res. One flash that could be huge right now to use for both of these defenders. Dizzy comes out. Tens gets ready to move forward. John Q to gets the pick off the two east. The push for that flash allows Zelsis to get the pick. Les becomes the last player standing. Also dropped by Zelsis as Sentinels will get a flawless on the defuse. Once they got tens up, reset. They launched everything at yellow. Yep. <laughs> we saw the entirety of Loud back there double taking on which corner they wanted to peek at and then trying to dodge the mollies they were hitting around them. Incredible hit. John Cutie finding two there was super big, making the rest of this yes. less pressured on the side of Sentinels as they retook. Also very nice to see as we talked about the stop and go that Loud is doing, that Sentinels could also do that on their retakes. Hey, the walls are blocking us, let's just res tens. Right. And then we'll use more utility on the second wave. Yeah. So very well done. Good calls on the fly here from the IGLs as Loud on Sadak's right side is calling loud to try to push very aggressively behind the cascade and trying to clear out the A site once again. This KO from Tens continues to nullify the utility that Kalazine's trying to bring, allowing Zekin to be posted up and get the first blood against QCK. They couldn't clear a site fully of the Opper. The cascade forwards just waited out by Zekin, and then they fire back. Kalazine able to trade now on to Tens. Oh. Oh, utility! Wow. The Mox goes on the ground, bounces his own glasses head, who turns around and says, wait a minute, with another kill there. On to John Q to even a third to dash away. The quad denied by second, but Galaxine is there for the trade. One slight mistake, and you saw how Sentinels just lost that round. Yeah. Sentinels as well has been looking at a relatively timid timing from the Loud Squad in all these maps. And you almost see that there as Saucy's ready to throw one and be like, they're still coming in. Wait a minute, they're in sight. <laughs> yeah, that's the timing Loud's trying to play right now. Right in your face. Awesome stuff. Loud turning the heat up. Kalanzine now with the ultimate on the Hunter's Fury. We saw this being used a lot on Lotus right off the rip to deter something that the defense was doing or the offense was doing. And we'll see if it clears out the position of yellow or right under Ness where John Cutie was playing the other round. He doubled up. Focus towards B, less watching the rear here. And Sentinels are playing a little more timid after seeing Loud's aggression on that last round. Even scaling behind here, the Owl Drone. Once again, green control, orb up for grabs. Mm -hmm. It seems as though we're trying to go for the quick yellow control. John Cutie just waiting. Posted up are two of his teammates around the corner. We're also watching flank under the tube. Vipers pit up as they pick up the orb. So they have it available for less. There's a swing on both ends. Nano Swarm to delay Sadak from pushing forward and trying to get this plant down. Underhand flash, a swing out of that one. Blinds two, tens, picks up the kill. Plant then comes down. Instantly though, Zelsis gets the kill onto Sadak. A two versus four, disadvantage for Loud. Those two ultimates are still available and we might try to delay as much as they can for Kawadzine's Hunter's Fury to do some damage! Ooh. As that's one slight mistake there, Les is able to punish it. And that pit could be very detrimental for the retake of Sentinels. Snakebite on the ground. Wingman's trying to defuse it so far. Les falls! And Wingman gets to defuse. Van Sealy, you mentioned something really awesome on the last round is that those the walls that we saw Loud beat EG with using to encroach farther into the territory, get the snowman, push them off, are being used by Sentinels to pick up their util and their members. Yep. Saucy's able to throw a free Dizzy, recollect Dizzy with the Harbor Cascade or Wall Up, whichever one was there, and then they re-hit the site again using Loud's walls against them on this nice B retake. We'll have to see how that gets switched up or if Loud can pressure forward to not allow those walls to be so efficient for Sentinels. Three ultimates here for Loud. We're back now to a tied one, one of our closest to the series here as Sentinels ran away with the early rounds of the first few maps. Does not seem, seem like Loud will let that happen here. A low buy on some members of Loud, but still those ultimates or what they want to execute. Same type of play here. Yeah. Just trying to have Zekin give him an opportunity to get a op pick. Alan Joe, knife comes out canceled, no information. So we're going back and forth. It seems like deja vu in round number seven. 
Will they be ready for a second posted at the same spot looking towards the pipes? And yes, they are because looks like Lao was trying to move down towards 410 instead. Saucy ready to greet them though. Pushing forward, Sadak gets that pick off the Zekin to trade it off. Less with the lurk that they mentioned on the desk, but he gets spotted by the turret. And Zelsis is going to be on a 1v1 in that section. Meanwhile, though, able to get the lockdown up on the attack, which will potentially allow Lao to move in and get a plan. Thrash already used on this. Great job by Loud to avoid that and be able to kind of skirt around that ultimate of Saucy here. Now Sentinels with the retake. Loud, they are ready. The knife is in the back of the site, does not spot anybody, so Sentinels can start working forward up the site. A trade off that happens. Back and forth. Two weeks again in a clutch situation against John Cutie and Tens. Tap on the spike, it's not really for him. No. So he has to lurk up, and that high tide is going to be annoying to Enemy deal with, but it was a tap. Tens gets the pick, the run across, and John Cutie wins that fight. IGL coming up strong again. John Cutie, these situations that you put him in, you see him coming out on top quite a bit. And for a pressure to be on a new player, it does not seem like it affects him all that much. Grabs the operator, they're gonna have that going against the next round as that's been traded back and forth a little bit here. You should run. As we see this play right through window from spawn, John picking up the first one. And just having to dislodge the rest of Loud out of the site here. Crazy to be able to come in 3v2, e easily taking down the members there. John Cutie for the 1v1. Now Ultimate's ready for him. Zelsis has the retake, so they can ensure this to be a next round. If they get that retake going just right. We look at the side allowed. They're going to call the timeout. Hunter's Fury is still there for Kalanzine. You have Bladestorm now coming up for QCK. What's the effect? Because we know the loud comp isn't using QCK as Ospos was used, right? It's more flexible. They yeah. can do what they want, but also if they want him to aggress, they can. How do they give him that space though with this composition? You don't, you're not really throwing flashes over a wall. You're not doing too much, not flashing anybody, to be honest. You're just breaking crosshairs. And technically for Loud so far on their attack, they can't do whatever they want. Because right? again, they when can't. it comes down to the initiator battle between Kawadzin rather and Tens, that knife denies so much information for Loud to really yeah. try to gain that space to move together or even get some pings out. So Sentinel so far on the initial hits coming out from Loud, they could always stay posted up, really. Yeah. And you continue with the same great protocols that they have on the retakes. I mean, they've got four diffuses, uh, three diffuses so far in the four rounds that they won. Loud had to figure out a way to hold the pulse plants. All right. Scattered low armor across both teams. Trying to get an upper operator shot here just to start off the round on some high lows. Very big pick from Zek, and he's gonna stay. And he's got support there, Dizzy, to try to get more information. Instead, there's a second Ooh. jump. Clobber is coming through, so they know the pressure is coming in towards Loud. But look at that instant pivot. Two players now pushing forward towards the A side. The rotate coming across as well. Orb, which should soon right. be coming up towards middle here to allow for them to cross. Meanwhile, the same good old thing, this time not being Sadak because it's Kalanzine on this Sova using right. the Aladron to bait out the players of Sentinels out yeah. towards this B sign and the walk slowly towards A. Full retake set up now for that side. All Loud has I to deal with is the move. ultimate, or sorry, utility from Zelsis, and that's just delay denial. Probably won't come up with too much. They'll be able to wait this out, and the Reckoning gives lets them know this space is free. QCK and goes even further. Here. Got a Hunter's Fury if they he want to be able use to get it there. here, unless QCK could do something. Actually, he's so out of position, Kawadzine. Not going to be able to use it. So he's going to be in a one and done for QCK. Gets a pick at least before he gets traded out by Zekin. A four versus four, trying to use the Hunter's Fury for the pulse button instead. Zekin gets the pick up to QCK as Nanoswarms are now trying to delay here on the attack side. There's that recon guard coming through. Kawadzine rips out the Hunter's Fury, but nobody's on the spike so far. Just a tap to actually bait out the ult. Here it comes, the wingmen to come out to start the defuse. Sentinels are fighting forward in front of their wall, but the shock darts are coming out, denies the wingmen defuse. Guard the wingmen! Couple of kills coming across though. <laughs> Kawatsi and Lesser holding the ground, stick butt on the ground, and there's no time left. Saucy on a one versus two, hoping to make it expensive, at least on the exit, they're both right out of ammo, but both still die from the spike. 
Loud tie up the game four to four. Beautiful chaos of a round. Oh my gosh. At one point, John Cutie grabbed onto the rope to block Wingman. <laughs> he was just sitting there holding onto the rope, spraying off of it. That's crazy. Everybody just trying to body block there. They're still able to get the util. The Viper's Bite actually coming up huge to cause the vulnerable there. And a uh, little handshake to end the round. High five between those two. Four to four now. These rounds are getting chaotic. This is awesome. And see how the players are just kind of regaining control of what's been happening in sight. We start this one off. Again, the focus from Loud starts with this B hit. They tempt it, they cascade, go with the drone and see what they can get out of a fight here. Cause Sentinels, they've been given that peak. Tens will be there or Zekin. Yeah. They're trying to get a first kill. That type of round reminds me of Pearl all over again. Trying to play oh double controller gosh. or the Pulse Planet. Everybody's playing lineups and sprays through smokes. And you're just crossing your fingers to actually get the diffuser. Just need some Odins. Exactly. Start spraying. At least it's been, it's been working for both teams. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you win some, yeah. sometimes you lose some, but it's a clean slate in round number nine. Four to four, our score line. Sadak trying to push forward off. An orb coming down on the defense. Tens only Again? has a sheriff alone. Underhand flash information. But Kaladzin, they were ready for that this time around. Yeah. Kaladzin and less. All comes out. Denial attempt of a plant. But Sadak still is able to put it down. Wow. Loudest thing so much farther forward. Staying too yellow. Still pushing out from long. Nice util kill. Zelsis is just dancing and dodging in there. Nice kill by Kaladzin who gets a third in the round. Even Sadak, I mean, the traits are nice. The position's great. It doesn't allow John Q to get anything done inside of his own pit. So he's gonna let that pit evaporate so he could save his weapon. But Loud, they're able to fight back and take the lead now. It's been a while since we've seen Loud having some sort of commanding lead. Yeah. Teamwork's on point for Loud here. Like we said, this, this composition doesn't just have one dashing in with free space being given by flashes and a bunch of utility. It requires Loud to be behind each other. It takes a lot more to get this composition to work that Loud is using. You gotta remember that. Very easy for Sentinels to pick apart the gap close if they can't reach QCK on the dash, right? He's left out on an island. Everything Loud does has to be in sync. And here, they collect a really nice round at B. They get the ultimate out of John Cutie as well, so they have to deal with less going into this round. Not their own teammate, but five to four. 10, or round 10 rather. Pretty good buy here for Loud to be looking at low armor buy for the Sentinel side. Low armor buy. And a pushing push mid. Forward. Exactly, looking for aggression. Staying outside of the range of the Dizzy. Something that also EG struggle with taking control of green. Nonetheless, Loud scores first. Advantage as Zelsis is under heavy, heavy pressure. Forced to fall back in the back of the site. Mosh moving forward to the way as Saucy gets oh two. Gosh. Looks back at the top of the floor. Ten as Tui takes him down though. Still the advantage comes out. The orb for a plant on the top of the A tower. Coming out from Loud. No command available for tens if they want to try to retake this one. But it comes down to if they could get these picks, and they cannot. Tui's looking clean on those two. Tui's toying with them here. And look at reckoning up again. Yeah. We just saw that clear a sight for loud into A. This is what we saw from Zekin in the previous map. So just raise alt after raise alt. Loud is collecting those alt. They're collecting Sen's head right now. And they want this fourth map real bad. Three ultimates to be used is saucy. Does that work? But. It was the workaround, still remaining. enough control over the site here for Loud to be able to, to control it. No, okay, I didn't know if it would go in. Where are we going? Towards A again, Reckoning held and ready. And Blade Storm available. Bumping into each other, getting concussed by the Reckoning. A ping coming out on oh, the Fury they go for him. Zekin's able to dodge it though. So that does no damage at all. Zekin <laughs> dashing forward, looking to reposition on the top of the A tower. QCK with the opener. There's that pick, but instantly traded out. Sadak's on the top, and they tried to do the null command on the Sentinel side. But as they were doing a lot of noise for loud, they stayed back towards the site and just picked out Sentinels on the retake, trying to be a little bit more proactive and aggressive against loud's take. Last with one. John Cutie here to try and clean up three. It's gonna be tough. I love the choice. These final shots come through. 
You might look at Kyle and Zine's Hunter, Hunter's Fury and say, why go after the Jet? Why go after Zekin? Well, you're keeping the Blade Storm out of sight. He may updraft. He may do a bunch of stuff to dodge it, but your team has freedom from the Jet's ultimate. They just focused on Orb to get exactly. that site. They don't have to deal with an updraft for instance, and they can just focus on crosshair placement for these type of kills. <laughs> That's an easy one. Why are you all in the Jet? I'm not going to explain it. But no, great play there by Cowan Zine to actually take Zekin out of the mix. Really heady stuff there. Very happy. You see Loud still vibing. Even when they were down, they had the same smiles on, and they have to be feeling even better now, Van Silly. Final round here of the first half on map three. Loud comes back to take their first half, possibly eight to four. We see the spike down, so this is going to be a weighted out round. They're seeing again if Sentinels will give them that peak at yellow just to get that first fight less carrying the op in mid. And finally, Sentinels are able to take control of the A side pressure. So you see That's how true. Zelsis and Zekin are currently posted, watching Belt, watching main. So they know now that the hit's coming towards the B side, at least to start. The early call from Loud to take control of yellow, as you mentioned here, Riv. At the same time, important to keep Sasi alive because he has a thrash to work with. There's the commitment now for Loud for the first initial hit. But they haven't really crossed the line to try to tap a spike. They're trying to Poison waste off. that utility out first. I'm gonna stick this. They're using a different wall now for Harbor. They're not allowing those sections to be created as much as Sentinel's retake. This wall is covering mid and snowman entrance now. Straight across instead of diagonally. Cascade goes forward. They should be able to gain position. Get that default plant in, and this is gonna be hard to uproot loud with five alive. But here comes Thrash to try. Thrash and giving time for Tens even to rotate across. And oh, choose the case. Still get the pick though onto Zelsis. So as we got one, looks like he was detained towards the back of yellow. I think that was going to be less here. But an off shot missed here by Zekin. Kusuke answering back on the tens. Looking good for Loud on the pulse plant. You need it. Tens to come across with these flashes to help, but instead it's Loud winning this pulse plant, pushing forward. There it is. And dropping the IGL. Again, we talked about it took a while for Loud and talking about Loud with a definite strong lead yeah. in a map. And they're definitely showing it here on Icebox. In a perfect correction to the way the wall was being used against them at B. They throw that, this wall is from before that. At the end of the round, they do still throw the wall that covers Snowman, but look how far up they are now. They're not at yellow trying to take the long distant fight. Well corrected by Loud for the 8-4. <laughs> at least he's making me smile. At least right now, our first time we get to see a look of Sentinels on Icebox. We'll throw it to the desk to see what they think about it. And for a first look, you got to say, not bad for Sentinels, but Loud still very much in this. They're trying to claw their way back into this series, but the pressure is certainly on here, Doug. Yeah, I mean, I think they, the truth is they've got to continue this momentum. They can't let Sentinels really get to a comfortable place, or they're going to be able to pull this thing off. We've seen Sentinels be able to fight through adversity. We've seen them pull off insane comebacks across different maps. Yeah. You cannot allow them an inch. They're the team who's gotten the closest to a reverse sweep and lost the most tragic way. You remember the lock-in finals two rounds away? <laughs> from making it happen. But that's not what you have to remember. You have to remember that this is a squad that can always rally back. Sadak is the leader. is always someone who believes in that comeback being possible. They're good for it. But for Sentinels, they're going into this second half with a composition that I think is going to be stronger yeah. on attack. This is still going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, I think so. I think the one benefit is that every time you look at Sadak, he's laughing. Right? The vibes are still good. Yes. He's still cutting it up with his guys. Kind of so, have to, too. And I think that's the mark of a good leader, right? Like, that's yeah. something that often can go unnoticed and not really mentioned. But I think keeping that positive mental for your squad, uh, given some of the roster changes, given that you have younger players, matters a lot. But talking about mental, if there's someone who get it back for Sentinels, it would have to be Kaplan. He's become mm. a really a leader for this team, developed into that role as a coach. If they could do it in this fashion, a comeback on one of their opponent's strongest map on their debut, showing a new comp to 3-0 loud, the America's champions, it would be unbelievable for their first win in a regional finals in three years. This means everything for Sentinels, but loud, they would be the team to rip it away. Yeah, a statement could be made here, but if we've learned one thing, you never count out the Brazilians. Let's send it back over to our casters. Thank you so much, GB. Doug and Mimi, indeed. We can never count out the Brazilians now as they take the lead. Oh, Ninja to be four. A very strong first half that they showed on their attack. This time, Sentinels trying to see what they're going to look like 
on their own attack side. We know that Loud has been very annoying with this double controller against EG, mm -hmm. how they're able to lock down this B side. And that's why Sentinels, for the beginning of this pistol, are looking to move five players with but the potential pulse plant situation. Yeah, it does. You see the armor and the two mollies on Zelsis. That makes me think Zelsis wants to be the last alive with a bit of protection and that molly post plant. Let's see what Sentinels tries to do. Loud with great util dump into the side. Just got it. And deny Sentinels. And also deny the two nano swarms that was going for yep. that plant. So that's going to be even more difficult for Sentinels to play that pulse plant. Staying anchored oh up. My that's gosh. the name of the game. That's what they have to do when they can't. Until second finally pops the first one that's against Loud. Kowtzee gets the flick onto tens. Second is now alone. The double swing high low. And Loud looks really good. A slight mistake on just waiting the timing of that plant. Denied by the shock darts of Kawazine allows for them to score nine. Right, and the focus that Zeus is, with, like you said, was to have two Molly's post plant. Everything was instantly and snuffed out by Loud. That was planned protocol at its best right there. Beautifully done, you see it again, and the shots just absolutely connecting. A uh, far cry in, in difference from what we had first round pistol of uh, Tens and <laughs> Zelsis just cleaning up the right side of the map. Loud finally get theirs. They start off here on the second half exactly how they want, but they're going to match up against Stingers. It's not the classic buy from Sen. They're going right into this with aggression. This is going to be a reckoning buildup for Tui's. That seems to be the focus. Looks like Sentinels couldn't punish it because of the cascade that came out. Yeah. So they cut noise and set and looking for the snowball. After the KO knife gets shot out, double flash clearing out the back of the site once again. Just trying to fade out utility. Wingman though looking for the set of the plant for the A tower. So changing things around. Just parkour and across the A site. Plant now comes down. Aljon only spots a second. But already loud has funneled back and push towards the back of the A site. Sassy scores fighting first, forward. long range with the Stinger. And definitely fighting forward alarm bot to wow. also ring the bell, allowing here Sentinels to try to fight back on the left side of 410. But Les is able to even up the tally. The Stinger buy from Sentinels, they're trying to keep the weapons and the engagement close. Nano Swarm getting a pick onto QCK, but three versus three, as the time is in favor of Sentinels so far. The high tide coming up. Tens with the long range Stinger once again. And oh Sentinels are able God. to score on the four spy. Sentinels push through on the four spy and completely take Loud off guard. No idea that was going to happen in sight, and it wasn't a flank. It's nothing else. Sentinels behind each other, pushing straight through. Saucy's been incredible with the stinger. Tens has been incredible with the stinger. Enemy remaining. And the positioning that they had as well on pipes was incredible to be able to pick up those kills that Tens had there towards the end of the round and shut down the defuse. Wow, Sentinels come up huge there. What are Loud going to do? They go to a Bucky, they go to a low buy. Sentinels now can start to push for a possible win on this map. They need to, they need to tie it up, but that could easily happen now with the way this would swing. Loud taking every precaution on the defensive side now. Sadak knows what to do in these situations. They've been there before. They know different how they want to play this. Jiggler cross, spraying through the top of the A tower. Less made it out with 22 HP remaining and instantly we're moving forward for a plant. Oh, oh. Red. Looks like the years were spotted there. By Sadak with the Sheriff. ADSing down, baiting the plant for them to move forward. At least the backstab is there. Zelsis watching that flank, dropping QCK. Flash is moving forward across the high tide. You hear the rappel, second is just waiting behind it. And they're okay with it for Sentinels. Yeah. They are playing against pistols at this point. Just really loud. For the yeah, last the last ones. two guys can't really do too much. You already see him pulling all the way back. He was just looking to run in and die from the spike after. But Sentinels are looking pretty good so far. Getting that four spy on that second round and winning the way that it did really foiled the plans now for Loud to have a very strong start yep. on the second half. I mean, I think they they quickly identified as well with the the cascade they're seeing. Tui's having alts that they might have been able to to sting or rush the second one, catching loud off guard, catching them in a in a position where they feel safe, to grab an orb and then reset. Sentinels, they want to attack as fast as possible. 
And just from screens there, they're figuring out that they can take it down. So there needs to be a little bit more protection as they head towards that next area for plant on wingman now. I still love the uh, the play that you saw there from Tui's hiding all the way back towards spawn, getting yeah. that pick and dying to spike, allowing them, him to be one away from the ult. Of course, it was the kill that was more important to get that ult point than his death from the spike in Sanin, and allows for them to maybe try to look for that pressure to pick up that ward towards B side, because Sentinels never really took control of that B side. But Sentinels in round number 16 decide to do it. And they deny the opportunity of Loud of building up ultimates here. It's been a while since we've seen this little box shot. The back of Snowman you can hit on top of green. And now they're waiting. For QCK, it did look like that dash went across. I think he's got the call. Zekin saw that little hair bun fly through. And now they wait. And they call such a good wait. The patience of Sentinels causes Loud to go for the full rotation, expecting an A hit, a free sight okay. here. And it's gonna be the call from Sadak that they need to come back. What a deep plan. Yeah, oh, they're like still going. They wanna definitely try to start working and fighting towards the spawn. You see that setup from Tens, but this time he actually, he doesn't have a flash to work with. So it's really gonna be Zekin trying to catch one early, sees that there's no early pressure coming out. Here's the Eldron, falls back into sight instead. So an opportunity now for Loud to rescale for the retake in the B site. Zekin behind the Cascade, a one for one though. One coming through, blocking vision on the left side of yellow. Three players posted up there for Sentinels on that post plan as well. So you hear the utility coming out for the retemp take. Zelsis on the top of green. Look at all that delay for that utility for Sentinels on that post plan as well. And looks like we want to try to save, to fight for another day, to try to keep the off for QCK. Oh my gosh. But Sentinels will get seven. Six rounds for Sentinels to solidify themselves as the kings of NA. It's crazy to think it's that close. Loud still on the lead though. There's work to be done. See here, this push through from Sentinels taking Loud off guard. And the play, the macro on that round, absolutely throwing Loud and Sadak for a loop. You're definitely seeing the hope there from Sentinels for sure. Coming back in the second half when they were so strong on the defensive side for the beginning of the series or even for kickoff so far, showing that they can have the momentum and the potential to really close out a very strong attack side on Icebox as well. As a change of pace, change of position from Loud. Same wall, but from a different position to block out Vision on mid and green. Zelsus decides to walk up on this and the rest of Sentinels holding behind it. There's nobody really watching an A side push except for an alarm bot. Yeah. And that, I find that interesting too, that it's an alarm bot instead of a turret because somebody could now move up on the top of L. So for me, maybe Sentinels are really looking to commit towards this B side. Exactly, maybe the pace they move, they feel comfortable just going forward, knowing the back won't be timed. And yeah, they're gonna get into position really fast here. A stinger, a guardian, but the operator's there for QCK. Did not expect Zekin to be on top of yellow. Tui's with the wide swing and gets picked off. QCK's too far behind. He's still anchoring towards the A side with that operator. Gives a chance here for Sentinels to move up. Recon dart prepped up ready, but it's shock darts instead. Same plant position behind the wall, and there's no utility there to deny him. And as I say that, the shock darts came through. A good way to recognize from last round to this round that Loud can stop that plant. That's the call from Sadak saying they planted deep. The team saw it too. We can deny that the next time they do it. They have to have them point timing here as it has a nice shot from QCK. Talk about Sentinels, the wall came up, they can pick it up and try to go for a plant. And meanwhile, a pushing car coming out from Celsius, who gets a pick onto Sadak on middle. QCK now, no targets available for a pick with the operator, especially when the wall comes up. Celsius also lurking through towards that kitchen. Here's the shot from the operator. Here's the footsteps of Kalazine falling back towards orange. So the rest of Loud pressing forward towards yellow. A nice spam through the poison orb. QCK falls. Now a tap on that spike, baiting out the swings from the Sentinels. But no picks until Celsius. Celsus gets the lurk kill. One more to go. Celsus again with the lurk to put three in the round and putting Sentinels one run away of tying the game. We heard Kaplan talking to Smix at halftime about how it's John Cutie and Zelsis. And you have to think that there was a lot of Zelsis going in to that round, the timing, the calls, how much time they needed to defend in sight or play back in sight for him to get there in the flank. 
controls the map. We see Zelsus has come up with two big ones there towards the end. Nine to eight now. Sentinels only trailing by one with the last four rounds in their favor. Get out of my way! It's gonna be a push down here. Loud wants to start to get aggressive. Even on their low buy, they have to get under the skin of Sentinels here. They can't keep playing default, it seems. QCK just heard the turret. Actually, he's still in range where he can maybe oh. surprise somebody, but instead just wants to deny visibility for Sentinels by breaking a turret early. So Sentinels pushing towards the A side instead. Should be a wingman plan here. Trade back and forth. Nice shot by QCK. Dash activated as well. Stinger upgrade back into the Sheriff. Snake bite pushing away, reckoning instantly getting popped. Asasi gets the plant from the wingman assist. Now there's that jump up, Saucy almost got that pick. Onto Les, jumping up towards the A Tower, who does get a pick of his own with the Sheriff. We talk about the lower buy here, Loud has to make plays and it's working out. Hunter Sphere, Alpha Coward scene, no contact. Les with the wall bank, onto Saucy as well. It's up to the IGL, John Cutie spraying across left and right. Now Les is sticking on that plant. It's looking pretty good here to hold it in the end. The lower buy for Loud, the thrifty. As the answer right back, and that hope is slowly dwindling away here since Sentinels forced by in the second round of the half. The Cove really putting a damper there on Sentinels trying to get to the spike. Saucy throws out a mox, just boink right off. And that's nice. crazy that he's able to get and break the turret down towards bottom mid and still come back <laughs> to get an opener on holding the A site. <laughs> Loud making the perfect little corrections here to pull it back in their favor, but this is still a lot of money for Sentinels as they come out of a timeout, and Kaplan uses these to great effect. It's gonna be Loud as well on that timeout, discussing how this can work, and honestly, Loud has actually been doing quite a bit of damage with the low buys. They came through the other round with a Stinger Guardian still tagging on to Sentinels, so as much as Sentinels have the timeout here, Loud gets to discuss what they want to and QCK back on that off. Seems like it's felt pretty good for them. They had Reckoning to control that last round, so it is gonna be up to a little bit more of that personal utility here to make sure Sentinels is not attacking aggressively. They are gonna clear space with Thrash in this coming round, and then they're gonna have the site with a lockdown if they don't have that to hold for, or if they, if, um, they don't use it, they can have it for the next round. So a lot of things Loud has to deal with right now. Sheriff for less. And he's got money. They're there it is. Gonna I was like, wait money. a minute. <laughs> I was like, no way you just have a sheriff right now. We just talked about this. There. Yeah, you'd mentioned clearing out. I mean, that's the pathing that they usually do here with the thrash. They could right clear there. around the 410. Yeah. Pick it back up and ult just behind 410 to really gain even more space, allowing time for them to set up for a full plant. So that's why you see Zelsis moving up with the team. John Cutie's the one watching the flank to start. The knife to see if Loud's gonna try to push forward with QCK on the yacht, but he's posted up towards B instead. Initiated. So cycling the lockdown before the thrash to start things off. Hmm. Don't get in my way. Les is just trying to get that timing. I mean, why not? Yeah. He'll be fine back, back there to, to run back run in. Plant on the left side though. Ooh. They do get the spray on it behind the cascade, so that's spiked down. Remember, the thrash is still available for Sassi. Zels is getting some sprays. It's the battle inside that pit. Playing on the extremities of it. But with that spike being down out in the open, looks like we have to try to reset for Sentinels. It's a thrash to make some noise, allowing Zelsis yeah. once again to look for a timing on that flank. Underhand spike. flash being thrown. Spike now being picked up. As they pull back away from this, leaving Zekin on the top. But this whole time, as Zelsis is lurking towards middle, that op was always towards that B side. And if they don't use the right utility to try to clear it here. 30 seconds left. QCK, it has some easy picks. The lurks, or the, the rotations have been so late for the last member of Loud. Oh. This time it's gonna pay off. Oh, and that's well done here on the positioning from Loud. Because of that op being posted up on the B side, they could focus on the kitchen, on the rotate down at the underpass. Even the op gets to pick off the side. Oh, time. All of them falling down, five seconds left. Actually, there is time at this point when yep. Tens picks yeah. it up. So a two versus two, the shorty Tens still gets the kill. But less now in a clutch situation, information of our Tens is at the high-low, Tens doesn't even need it. Oh my gosh. How did that happen for Sentinels to be able to convert that round when they dropped that spike in that kitchen?
It looks impossible. QCK with the shot, it gets denied. The two, just out of range with the shorty as well. S Sentinels, they're kind of just going for it in these moments. You know, you have no other choice there to plant, but to make it happen, the positioning counted and loud did not, that shorty kill was it, right? That, that pretty much solidifies it for the rest to come around and figure out what they need to do. I want to go quick. It's a flash over the high tide, and then a dizzy towards the front, an aggressive push forward as Zekin almost got that punish onto two E's. But there is a blade from out, the headshot of the Saucy, the spike is down, no commended, nice, also his nice, trying to run away towards yellow. Second pushes forward for the two kills, opening up the B side for a bit. There's still one player left, it's Sadak with the Vandal, pushing for it, gets the kill onto Zekin, who was protecting the spike platter, as last gets a nice shot. The rotate from behind, unfortunately there for Kawazin. Almost had the opportunity to get the pick. It's off to the Sheriff alone. Upgrading now to the Phantom. Nanosaur now being used. Even the turret on the back. The orb comes down. John Cuny swings on the other side. And Sentinels have tied up the game. Just like that. Three rounds away from being the kings of NA. Kings of Americas. Will they be able to make it happen? QCK on this yellow has been doing so much work and then sentinels are snapping back quick they're figuring out what the dangers are in these situations and acting accordingly zekin jersey's finest coming up again laying people down and yeah we are at 10 10. the big difference is sentinels have two maps under their belt here looking to finalize this harbor wall again connecting just down long B and then towards mid to slow and delay, but Sentinels is happy to do this. The rounds, they move fast. They are just going fast off the rip. Rounds, they move slow. They get the read they want. That's right, the job's not done here for Sentinels for loud. They're still looking pretty good. Lots of money. An operator out once again for QCK towards B main, a jump spot from Zek, yep. but they also have ult to work with for the retake. So Sentinels has to continue their due diligence here if they want to try to win this map, but Loud has been looking for answers so far just to try to close out this map. I think that was a miss. Zell just walks up like that. The swing oh, for a miss. Does get the surprise kill onto Kaozin with the contact. Dizzy now being thrown towards the air. Flash moving for Second dashing up. And that lockdown comes out prematurely. The spray through the cascade, second falls. The molly though is a little bit too far behind. I don't think it's gonna break it. Mm -hmm. So that rotates the players back. Zels is again trying to go for left. that lurk, but it gets stopped by QCK with the operator. It's a reset with only 24 seconds left. Sentinels have no choice but to commit towards the A site, but they still have a pit to work with. They have to get in. They don't have wingman to plant here. It's gonna take everybody being in sight to cover this. Tens again taking that nest position. John Cutie, though, not looking to use his pit. There you go. Brings it out towards the screen. Yeah, Breaking wonder. line of sight for the operator. Knife even thrown towards the screen. Spotting three. High tight. Separating the A site. Allowing Loud to try to swarm out with the four players they have remaining. They have a cove to work with for the defuse as well. Tuiz is the one that's going to have to stay alive here to give chances for Loud to fight back this round 21. Tens pushing forward within that pit. Still working on the other side. Or loud outside the dice. Sassy gets the spray. Tens inside. One more. The, Two more. the trays come out. Tens gets the third. Sentinels take the lead. They only need two now. What a wall coming up from John Cutie. Placed perfectly on the left side of a site, like you said, making loud come through. They have to take damage. They have to worry about their positioning. Sentinels is making nothing easy for loud here on any of these rounds from the get go. QCK, even with the off push, not deterring Sentinels, they stay, they re hit. Tens being tens. Absolutely on fire for these series coming in from knockout. And all of it through kickoff. That's crazy as well, looking at Loud on that round. They had the perfect play, the lockdown to actually funnel players into the op. And instead of really trying to gain ground off the radius that they've gotten and the space that they could have had from the lockdown and pin Sentinels really inside yeah. the A site, they played for the retake instead. And the Sentinels fans are behind the team for sure here. As again, only needing two rounds 
to actually sweep loud in this grand finals of kickoff. And coming out of this, it is again a low buy for Loud. We've seen Stinger, Guardian rounds. They, they continue to have to reach into the pockets with how much they're using just to get through these rounds on Sentinels, but still not coming away with the win. And Sen picking up three more in a row for themselves. It only goes back to Loud for one. Sentinels correct whatever happens, and they hit even harder the next time. It's, it just seems unstoppable from them right now. Two rounds away from solidifying this. And the wall's about to drop. Back A for Loud. They're not going to play too much. They'll put less on pipes. We know that Sheriff is always good for one. But Sentinels, they're all voting down this B long. And they're making their way towards that yellow again. Because the high tide didn't come run. early anymore. They just tried to really push forward for Sentinels. Knowing that the harbor's so far away, they tried to assist and delay even more. Now it's time for Sentinels to activate their lockdown on this attack side to try to get the plant in. Pushing away loud back towards the window. The timing of the flash misses, but it still allows for him to push forward. A wall comes up from Dewey, spurring through with the help of Sadak, dropping tens. Pulse plant now still activated though as the plant comes down for Sentinels. In a defuse attempt for loud. A tap on the spike first, a swing out towards the yellow. It's a one for one. Juicy K with the headshot of the saucy. Snake bite on the ground. John Q trying to stay alive. Pushed away as well by the enemy snake bite. Cloud burst up, jump towards the air. Beautifully done here. Living John Tuny with two kills, but Dewey's is still there for the trade. Loud. A bright light there with the individual Thirsty. skill. I think something we've been missing with the individuals being able to pop off on their own. What a cascade from Tui's to save himself. That was insane. Last second thinking to turn the round right around. Get Sadak the kill that would save him. And you can see what it means to Loud. That was a big one almost being suffocated out of the game if they weren't able to take that round on the low buy. So yeah, the low buy comes up with a win for Loud. They get a little more momentum. Reckoning is here to deny a take and Operator in the hands of QCK again. They have a bit of extremity control here. This is the first time we see Tui's... No, okay, he just goes up for the wall. I thought he was moving forward. And Loud and the Loud fans continue to show that they're still here to fight. Zelsis using a different path and going through the high tide, using his orb to try to lurk inside the kitchen. Sentinels four players set up. Slowly moving up here. Towards the A site. I mean, they did give their information away the first dizzy yeah. that came out. So maybe orb control could be the play. We're one away from getting a thrash out for Sassi and Bladestorm. And Zelsis, Zelsis trying to count on that one. Couldn't capitalize on that pick. It's the first time Zelsus has been kind of the, the spearhead of the Correct, strategy. Yeah. He's always the last to move, giving info. A was waiting for Zelsus to cause the disruption here. Loud doing a great job at holding their positions and not moving on this one. Sentinels cannot find an opening just yet. Waiting for Util to make that a possibility. So you see the high tide now being thrown from the generator. And already crosshairs are set towards that right side. Now Orb finally picked up, trying to use that thrash to create that space, but a Arachnid comes out. The audio cues allows bye Loud bye. to spam through that wall and get two picks. Left. And it's the same story once again. Yeah. Trying to rotate out, and where they're rotating to, an op on the B side. Q Beautiful hold to starting off for Loud. He's got cement boots over here. He just One does not leave remaining. the site. Spike down. Down. finds him on the rotation. Yeah. With Spike down, 13 seconds left. Loud gets the last, last pick and the last last so far. 12 to 11. As uh, they're looking to move this over to Bind. Match point. Oh my gosh. You know what? I want to see Bind. I want to see our last map. Let's go to five. Sentinels calling the timeout here so Kaplan can get in the ear of the players. Chat with Zelsus and John Cutie. Figure out what's happening. And Loud. Really accepting that yeah. round well. The Cascade and just denying Sentinels. A lot more of uh, seeing Loud not be pressured. The way we usually see them on top of the play, in front of everything and making the right choices. Sentinels has been able to make them error out quite a bit today. It looks like Loud though could get us to a fourth. And this is the last timeout now for Sentinels Elise. Of course, it's the last round of regulation as well. Why not burn it now? I'm trying to figure out yeah. how you want to close this out. He doesn't want any tweets. <laughs> he didn't time out. Well, I'm going to time out. Yeah, this is that last one. Thrash, seconds ultimate here. 
10 just off of one as well. If they can get a long B orb, that's an easy grab to make sure you're not gonna really deal with an alt on either side, but be shutting down that re-entry utility uh, retake from Loud. 25 seconds here for the players to ponder what may be this next play. I think Sentinels understands now that QCK is a staple at whatever site he's at, depending on the strat or depending on what they do, he'll be at the other site if they don't hear the off at the current attack. So they have to worry. They have to figure out a way to push QCK off. Keep up. That's a big question for them. They have to set up though. We've seen the dizzy in the flash before. Zelz has yeah. popped up get to get the way. flash towards green. Pop. Oh, yeah. But QCK the has the angle. Flash not does not affect him. He's just waiting to thrash. I don't think he even got the information. Oh, what? Almost felt like that was on him. Yeah. Just pulled away from the flick. But Tens picks up the ult orb and also has the ult command in the ready. Trying to delay even more. A high tide comes out all the way back from kitchen. That's two ease. Slowing down any type of push that Seno's trying to take towards green after getting that ult, anticipating an ult command hit. Zelsis gonna start doing a little roaming towards belt as they keep an eye on mid. Great choice by Loud and how they've rotated this coverage to lean over towards the B site. And yeah, seeing Saucy, you're probably like, okay, wingman spike, we got it. Per perfect, a lot of information there for Loud. But it's mind games. Look at him rotating back towards the A side. They're thinking, hey, Sentinels might pull back towards the A side and they're going for it. And the gamble doesn't turn out this time around. It worked for at least two all-ins. But this time, Sentinels are pushing forward in the A site. This is a very sketchy plan. Wingman comes out Done. for a plant. Sadat gets the pick. And a second one onto Zelsis. QCK with the off kill onto Zekin. Not even needed the assist. The pain on the last one. The flawless from Loud. Us are able to push this into a fourth map. They had to reach for a lot of that towards the end, but Loud all able to get it. It's the fact that they were able to figure out what Sen was doing. Correct the little things where it would be Tens or Zekin trying to get that first kill and coming up with the first frag. Loud needed everybody for that retake. And they started to understand that you were getting a Sentinels that was using your walls against